finished a lovely trail run. When you're tired and worn And you feel like you can't go on I'll be there to put One foot in front of the other chatting through the five things that I wish I knew before I had an L4, L5 hemi laminectomy and discectomy. It is currently Sunday and I had the procedure on Wednesday so I am four days post-op and things are going super well. I know when I was researching YouTube videos to watch prior to the operation I was very nervous to watch anything that would unsettle me so spoiler alert I don't share anything that would put you off having this operation it's more just an honest account of my experiences having just been through it. I wanted to make this while it was fresh in my mind. I took a few video snaps um, throughout the recovery process being in hospital and so forth so I thought it might be useful to share with someone else who is maybe anxious about having the procedure as I was. In terms of a little bit of context I had been having terrible hip pain as of January it's now August and that started on my right hand side and then migrated to my left hand side and the point at which I started to panic was when I lost the feeling on the outside calf of my left hand side. I would continually pester my GP and say like you know there's something definitely very wrong like I'm a super healthy sporty person and like I would know if something was not right and her kind of ongoing advice was really see a chiropractor and go swimming that kind of thing I did see a chiropractor about four times over the course of the year by a kineticist once I think I saw a physio maybe four or five times I went for multiple sports massages so I had really tried a lot of things the whole time I was trying to address like a hip issue and a leg issue not realizing that it was back related and there wasn't a particular incident where I suddenly felt like oh my gosh I put my back out so it was really just like a slow degradation of my legs and my hips so how the operation came about, I live in Cape Town in South Africa. I came to Naisna, which is about five hours away where my parents live, and came to see a hip specialist. He's an, actually an orthopedic surgeon, but I knew of three family members of mine who'd had procedures done with him. And so I wanted to get his opinion on what I thought was a hip issue. When you start losing feeling, surgeons are quite quick to you know, send you for an MRI because that's a telltale sign that something... I guess neurological has happened and for an MRI I think two three days after I'd seen him at which point he was able to give me the diagnosis which was this L4 L5 herniated disc and according to his explanation like most of the time a disc will herniate out on one side but mine had actually herniated out on two sides and it was what he termed a mature injury which means that it's not a recent injury so it may very well have happened in January unfortunately for me I had done everything from boxing to high intensity interval to the works and always had like subtle hip or back pain but nothing that I could kind of pinpoint as soon as I went for the MRI it was evident that I have very small discs in my spine which is genetic so between the two vertebrae and then as a result of that it makes you very susceptible to anything that might infringe or impinge nerve wise because the pain had become so severe at this point I didn't feel like I had a different option I wasn't 
kind of weighing up a surgery versus anything else. However, I do believe that things like cortisone injections can be helpful for these sorts of ailments. In my instance, because I was in Nisner for what I thought was a short period of time, I was quite keen to have all my appointments go quite quickly. Once he diagnosed the symptoms and told me that I needed the surgery, I proceeded very quickly from that diagnosis into the surgery itself. I'm going to launch into my five things, hoping that some of them will help you and maybe clear up any questions. And if I'm sitting a bit strangely, it's because I'm wearing a brace, which is common after the surgery to help relieve the pressure on your spine. It's unfortunately not Khloe Kardashian's like weight train or anything. feet kind of the days leading up to it because I felt like I hadn't tried cortisone and it was a very new revelation that it was a back related thing. So if I had to do it over again, I maybe would have consulted for a second opinion. Not only can an orthopedic surgeon assess this sort of condition, but so can a neurosurgeon. So it's almost like an intersection between a neurological issue because it's a pinched nerve and an orthopedic surgeon because it's back or bone or spine related. It is a huge undertaking emotionally and physically going through that hospital process is challenging at best so you do just want to have the peace of mind going into things that you trust that your surgeon is expert in that field and that you have maybe got a second opinion on your MRI. The thing that put my mind to ease was that when I consulted with the anaesthetist who would be doing my anesthesia he'd said your doctor has done three of these in the last two weeks it's very routine. What they didn't really hammer home and I understand why is the fact that it's not common for younger people to have discectomies as it is for older people because your discs become kind of more and more at risk as you age so to be 33 as I am and to be needing a discectomy is somewhat unusual I think you're either young and you've injured yourself in a very specific way or you're old and it's a degradation of your you know, constitution, I guess. <laughs> there are a lot of times when I was kind of lying in my hospital bed wondering, have I bitten off more than I can chew? Like, am I actually capable, like strength-wise, emotionally, to go through with something like this? So I think just having that 100% clarity that the medical team that are there to support you are going to have your best interest in heart. The third thing would be a big consideration for me is what your living situation is like and who you have around you to support you. So I am fortunate in that both of my parents were very happy to drop everything to assist. That's obviously not the most common scenario so you would need your partner, your friends, your roommates, whoever to chip in and my fiance is also arriving shortly to you know support me and support my recovery journey. So it's really important in these sorts of operations that you have a lot of love 
and support around you because you are definitely going to need it that you're obviously not super mobile after the surgery and it's going to be challenging to do very much for the six weeks afterwards again because it seemed like i had expedited a lot of these things i hadn't done too much research into the recovery side of things so i'll just pop that into this point as well and um, so you wear this brace for six weeks in america i believe it's slightly different because in the videos that i watched people seem to go home the same day in my instance it was very different i went into icu that evening so intensive care effectively and was monitored very closely because i mean at the end of the day they are operating next to your spinal column there's spinal fluid there's nerves and your pain management needs to be very proactive because you are of course in a lot of pain they've cut through back muscle and a lot of layers in order to get to your spine and in my instance because it had herniated on both sides it was an incision that required the surgeon to access both kind of legs effectively or like the nerves pertaining to both legs so a lot of consideration there and then the subsequent night spent a night in the orthopedic ward, which I thought was going to be my last night, but ended up having an adverse reaction to a painkiller called Tramacet, which gave me symptoms of nausea, lots of vomiting to the point that I couldn't keep food down and I also couldn't keep the pain medication down. And I felt very anxious, very sweaty. They would give you painkillers, you would vomit, and then you wouldn't be given painkillers for another whatever, six hours. I do remember at parts of it feeling quite helpless. I ended up getting kept on for an additional night. So yeah, those would be like top three things. Fourth thing I would say is super important is to just keep your spirits up throughout your hospital visit, however long or short it is. Things that really helped me was having a hysterical book, Bill Bryson's Down Under, can highly recommend. I bought a three meter phone cable to make sure that I could always get in touch with my family and let them know if I needed anything because they were coming to visit three times a day I'm um, in the visiting hours the other things that were helpful were like having toiletries and hairbrushes and toothbrushes and that kind of thing just to kind of center your mind on like there's life after the surgery because there were times when you're lying there like a sweaty mess in your robe and just feeling like very not like yourself your hair is like a mess you haven't washed your face you can't shower because you can't get to the loo um, and so things obviously can be quite challenging. So just keeping your spirits up and I guess making sure that you feel reassured of like the things you have to look forward to. I have a distinct recollection before I went under anesthetic, under general, crying to the anaesthetist because they kept on calling me Mrs. Hollis <laughs> and I'm Miss Hollis, but I'm engaged. And so I said to the lady, the anaesthetist assistant, I'm actually Miss Hollis, but I'm getting married in December and then bursting into tears because in the back of my mind, I'm still thinking the most morbid of, you know, am I even going to get to see my wedding and get married? You know, you just have these like very irrational thoughts when you are heavily sedated and about to go under such a procedure. I was given two sedatives and I'm feeling very calm, I guess, but obviously also medicated and hoping that my wait isn't for too much longer. It's 10 past 10 now and I'm meant to be having my surgery at 11. Loads of changes of pajamas just to make sure that because you're not able to shower that you can change regularly. Um, once you're able to get the gown off post-surgery, put clean pajamas on and like sponge bath and do those sorts of things. Whew, sorry, I was getting a bit out there. You know, you've got a better look at my gorgeous corset as well. In terms of the fifth thing that I wish that I knew, I'm not sure, and you guys can let me know in the comments which you think is better, between being totally naive and not knowing much about both the procedure and the recovery, versus knowing everything there is to know. Because I definitely found myself kind of squarely between the two where I felt like I kind of knew a bit too much having watched the procedure in innate detail and then not really understanding the recovery process. So I would suggest taking one of two approaches to that. So either just trusting in the knowledge of your surgeons or researching, you know, the best neurosurgeons, the best orthopedic surgeons in your area, getting two opinions and then moving forward with the diagnosis diagnosis but not doing too much other research or knowing absolutely everything there is to know in terms of recovery and so forth. The main reason why I didn't want to go to the ends of the earth to research it is because I'm getting married in December like I mentioned. I have limited time to get off work and to go ahead with something like this so I didn't feel like 
holding things up by taking two weeks to make a decision was going to be helpful in my instance but it may be the case that you haven't left it as long as I have in which case you probably have a bit more time to make up your decision. The recovery though I will fill you in a little bit more on that. The main restriction is not sitting for long periods of time. It's like such a big relief on your spine not to be sitting. They want you to either be walking or they want you to be lying down and when you are like even eating typically I would be lounging at like a 45 degree angle I wouldn't be sitting at the dinner table like this because it's going to get very uncomfortable very quickly the driving component I believe you can drive within about a two week period it depends so much I guess on things like age and so forth the biggest challenge that I've articulated to my physio and really experienced is when you are walking there's a tendency because there's been trauma in your spine to kind of like crunch down in a way and her biggest advice even when you're walking I'll see if I can demonstrate it <laughs> just can't get up easily but basically is to I'm not going to move the chair um, is to basically take your posture from like something like this to like pushing your coccyx out a bit putting your shoulders back um, and just trying to walk with confidence even though in the beginning you're not going to feel very confident which is something that I have um, taken to heart and after the six week period of just getting mobile there's apparently a subsequent six week period where you would focus on getting your strength back so I was trail running, running, playing tennis, doing all sorts of things that I'm very aware that would not come back to me within kind of six weeks time without a lot of like physio intervention. I just found myself squarely between knowing and not knowing and if I were to know I would rather research the recovery side of things versus worrying about having a back operation it's all going to be totally fine like these people don't even break a sweat about it I did notice like when the surgeon comes back in to speak to you they are very concerned about you lifting your feet pushing back against their hands that sort of thing because they don't want to have like inadvertently touched or injured something at, at no point does the surgeon or anyone seem stressed it's basically you as the patient just going through the motions of having been operated on and in the space of being in the hospital for three days the thing that wasn't apparent to me before the operation because I've never had a major operation other than a tonsillectomy which is like the most routine procedure in the world was how many nurses and doctors attend to you it is countless people that help you in the process and they know for every stage that you're at in the journey exactly what you need exactly what you shouldn't do even things like the brace they're very quick to explain that the reason you wearing a brace is because they don't want you doing any kind of like twisting motion they explain how to get out of a bed to you the fact that you'll be stuck otherwise because the back muscles are now gone and things like squatting that would have come very easily to me because I'm quite quad dominant is going to be difficult now because you've been lying in a hospital bed not moving um, for quite some time so they give you quite a cool recovery process for the first six weeks like I mentioned to just get your mobility back and then after that you can obviously take it from there there's going to be a brighter future at the end of the operation that was kind of what I kept on telling myself and it's got me through and I am totally fine like I say four or five days afterwards the only symptom that I'm experiencing currently is a distinct tightness in my back when they changed the dressing the nurse did say to me your skin has already started to bind back so I'm guessing the incision's only about this big judging by how big the plaster is on my back and there's a subsequent plaster where the drain was you can't pick up anything off of the floor I can't bend down to pet my dog I can't pick anything up and I thought I was being so clever because my folks stay in a double story house to pop my MacBook in a little like long champlier bag because it's like a super light bag and a super light laptop and literally that makes you realize like the pressure on your back why you're wearing a brace why you're not carrying heavy things is a macbook in like a tote bag is unbearably heavy so i definitely am not tempted to pick anything up um it's kind of like what they drum into you before you leave the hospital i was able to walk out of the hospital i didn't even have to be rolled out 
you can hear I get out of breath quite quickly and I also get very tired quite quickly. So yeah, lots of like napping and reading and watching Netflix. So I really do hope that this video provided some sense of calm and clarity. If you do have any questions, you can pop them down below. I would be so happy to help you be your big sister going through all of this. It's incredibly difficult. And yes, sure, it's a minimally invasive procedure, but it is still trauma to your body and it is still very scary so I can't wait to see you in the next video hopefully I'll be so much better and not be speaking about final recovery but who knows I might be I can't wait to see you in the next video so we can keep on doing a little better